in our coach accommodations this evening, you have been assigned a seat. That is going to be that tan, yellow, or green boarding pass issued either downstairs at the station services or upon arrival train side. Upon locating your seat, we do kindly ask that you please place those boarding passes above your seat. Upon departure of this, well, this is uh, going to be interesting evening, because, yes, will be folks, away the rest of the train. I'm in sleeper for this train. Passes back as the tickets are taken. Totally not a deal. Last time I did this was eight years ago, nine years ago. It was a while back. So this would be an adventure. I'm only going all the way to San Antonio. On a cruise, I'm going to go ahead to coach. For passengers traveling with us, our coach accommodations today, all restrooms Should are located on the lower level of each coach car. Should also be on interesting. Coach coach um, restrooms are only located yeah, on the lower level. Being here on the upper level, we've been trying to travel. If you're traveling in the sleeping car, there are four restrooms located on the lower level of each sleeping car and one upstairs in the center. Should be interesting. We do have two food service cars on today's train. They're located for of our coach accommodations and our technical Oh, that's another thing. I get to walk. Through three coaches to get to me, anything and else on this train, lounge car, and the dining car. But hey, I get a view out the rear end, so should be nice. Alright, so 9.50, we are 10 minutes from departure, and feeling yeah, pretty good. Another quick note is that I got to see the Amtrak Metropolitan Lounge here in Los Angeles, and oh my gosh, it's actually pretty nice. Um, I hadn't actually ever been in it before, I had the only other sleeper trip I had taken, it was coming here into Los Angeles from San Antonio, so it was a cool experience. Nice little historical gallery, some really cool paintings, and uh, got to watch the Astros get blown to bits tonight. Oh dear, the Nats are going to sweep, aren't they? But, you know, regardless. Wow, that was pretty nice. And uh, this is indeed the swan song of sleeper service and long distance rail here in the country. Yeah. At least so far, it's pretty darn cool. But hey, I'll just see how I sleep through this. Alright. Oh. And I get to change not, not one, but two time zones tomorrow. So that should be pretty fun. Alright. Let's continue the madness. Alright, here we are. Guess everybody was partying last night. Yeah. Oh, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for your patience and cooperation. We're paused here briefly, waiting for some freight traffic to clear up. Once it does clear by, we'll be on our way. Thanks again for your patience and cooperation. It was not Union Pacific delaying Amtrak. It was Amtrak delaying Amtrak. Phoenix or you or somewhere there. was so Something like that. Something smelled always there. 52 and 28. Okay, well we are here, welcome to the Alamo City. Okay, so we actually uh, made it. There's our train, and there's the absurdly high.
giant number of uh, high-rise towers, apartments. Yeah, I guess. But seriously, Austin, what the heck happened? Like, is this all really necessary? And yes, despite all the delays and uh, all that happened, I made it to Austin pretty much on time, just about 30 minutes late. So the crew actually did something really interesting when we got to San Antonio. They stopped the Sunset Limited there in the approach track to the platforms. They dropped off the two cars that were going to make up the Texas Eagle, that rear coach and the sleeper that I was in. They pulled that onto track number two, the further platform to the San Antonio station, and then they backed the Texas Eagle into our cars, they hooked up the connection, and then they pulled ahead into the station. I didn't realize that the, our cars were actually onto the Texas Eagle until I hopped out of the train. I was, I was in the downstairs area just waiting to get out. And then, yeah, they pulled it off. So props to Amtrak for just getting us on through. It did, of course, result in, well, us not having the allotted time that we usually get in San Antonio, but hey, we got out of San Antonio at about 7 a.m., right on time, despite all that happened. Um, so regardless, you know what? Amtrak totally crushed it. They totally crushed it out of the park in terms of making up the delays. At that, honestly, no, it wasn't their fault. The track work taking place between El Paso and Alpine, um, yeah, they got it done. It was pretty darn cool to see. The track work was on the Valentine sub, specifically between El Paso and Sierra Blanca. The diversion between the Toya sub, which goes to El Paso, no, not to El Paso, it goes to Fort Worth and Dallas. It's that line, and the rest of the Valentine sub, which goes down south through Valentine to Alpine and all of that. So, we made up the time. We were delayed about an hour getting into Alpine, but hey, in the end, uh, it worked out perfectly well. Oh, and it was, of course, freezing in Alpine, and it was actually freezing yesterday in Austin. I'm recording this on Saturday to the 26th, but hey, it worked out really well. Um, gosh darn it, I do got to fly back though, so, <sighs> but hey worked out really well. So that does wrap up this trip report. Um, if I do another trip like this, I am surely going to record it because I actually had a whole lot of fun making this and just shooting footage out the train from all sorts of angles and getting stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.